Alright guys, um welcome back to Black Flame. To this episode or oh, what I'll be sharing on this episode is what I think is one of um my most critical like or one of the most critical parts of my life work. Um you most likely have seen the title, so I can as well just start. Um, but first an introduction that kind of like gives the basis for why I can talk about this, right? So I've been by and large, a Christian artist since 2004, that's 20 years. I have been a professional since 2010. What that means is that for what 14 years 14 15 years now all i have done with my life is music and music that is um, founded on faith or the values that are birthed by my faith that's what i have done entirely as a professional since 2010. so just based off of what I've seen, the different generations of, you know, music or Christian creatives and all of that, that I have seen firsthand as an active practitioner in the space, it is something I can talk about, right? But first I'll share an encounter that I had that changed my life, changed my mindset changed my orientation and changed how i view everything uh music you know with and for the church with and for the world um you know just music the way i see everything right and it was in 2017 now i wouldn't go into like the details of that encounter but i'll just touch on it a bit it was one of these mornings in 2017. Note that by that time, I had um, I had been in music for what seven years, seven eight years, because it came from 2010 till 2017. It's about seven eight years. Um, but then I had this encounter, and, and I was I was being schooled about the limitation or how the how the church how the body has limited um, the expressions of music and creativity by the children of God or from children of God. And that is the encounter that has informed everything that I've done and the guys in my team, the guys around me since 2017 till then. That was the encounter that changed my orientation from seeking platforms to creating platforms that was the orientation that birthed light out which we do around high schools that was the orientation that birthed aramanda the festival that's the orientation that birthed launch 464 my residency that's the orientation it, it literally just changed my entire landscape mental landscape and how i go about the work that i do 360 degrees right and um but someday I'll share that encounter I had and all of that. I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm supposed to go into all of the detail of that now. So now, um, church music, and I'm using music as a microcosm for church creativity or creativity by Christians. So Christian creatives and how we should use art and what we do with art. Let's take an army. In an army, there are different platoons. There are different um, regiments, you know. There are platoons that stay home. There are platoons that go to war. There are platoons that engage enemy territory. There are platoons that guard the home front, right? And 
we have to see ourselves as that army, like an army of creatives, right? Now, part of what um, that encounter in 2017 did for me was show me or, you know, school me on how it is actually God that has equipped different children of his in different ways. It's what's called the manifold wisdom of God. So there are diverse kinds of expression, you know, that God's children have. And he's the one who put these things in them. And there, there's a purpose for which he, he graced his children differently because they are different assignments that he has for different children. We're not all going to do the same thing, right? You probably have an idea of where I'm going, but I'll get more into like the detail. So, so what has happened is my people have seen music from the house has only been for the house. So everybody or most people in terms of like leadership in the body and all of that, build creatives to just serve music and arts within the body, right? However, that encounter showed me that that's not God's plan. How do I know? Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47 talks about the river. And the latter part of the of the chapter talks about, I mean, the the aspect of that scripture that we capture the most is, you know, you move in the in the river, and then he measured the river, and it was after a thousand cubits, it was up to the ankle. After a thousand cubits, it was up to the knee. After a thousand cubits, it was up to the waist. After a thousand cubits, it was the river that. One had to swim in, could not walk in anymore. But if you backtrack a bit, you see that that river flowed from the temple and then it flowed out. The river flowed from the temple, from inside the temple, and then it flowed out, the same river. Psalm 46 verse 4 says that there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. So this river flows out of the temple, but most of the healings that it does happens outside the temple. Flows from inside the temple, does a lot of its work outside the temple. So that links or brings me to this part that I shared on a, an IG live that I was on with a brother of mine. And I was explaining how I see um, the various fields that Christians ought to play um, as concentric circles. Now, I'll come to concentric circles. Concentric circles, that's the house, the garden, the fields, and the forest. I'll explain all of that. But this is what um, the church has done. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. So we have concentric circles. We have the house, we have the garden, we have the field, and then we have the forest. The house is temple. The house is congregational worship, congregational music, music, vertical music. I call it vertical music. Music to God, music about God, music for God, music to praise God, and music connecting the people of God with God. You know, and so you have um, our Nathaniel Bassis, Sinach, Don Sion Yekon, Fifila Sunday, you know, I mean, and I'm speaking with Nigerian examples now. If you have your Hill Song, you have your Bethel, um, Fellowship Creative, um, and you know, various worship leaders and praise leaders. 
They make music for the body of Christ. They make music to lead God's people into God's presence. But that is music within the temple. Psalmists, Levites, whatever title we want to use to describe them. They make music for the temple, within the temple. But the river flows out of the temple, which means the river is present within the temple. The river is present outside the temple. The source of the river, the beginning of the river is in the temple. So everyone who operates outside the temple, which I would explain, because we will have, we now have, but we will have much more. Because that's actually God's um, intent for this time. We're going to have more creatives who would be engaging the world, engaging systems, engaging the society, engaging various species of endeavor. But they will have the connection with the temple because it's the same river that is flowing from within the temple outside. Right? So I break down the house, the garden, the field, and the forest. So I've broken down the house. That's congregational worship. Then you have the garden. You have the garden where it's outside the temple, but it's still very, it's still very Christian. It still sounds. You hear it and immediately you're like Christian vibe. Now you're thinking, would you have like Christian creatives who would make content that immediately you hear you may not know that it is Christian? The answer is yes. And those are those who will be playing in the field and in the forest. Now I said, the, the more you go, the more, the less obvious it is. Yeah, that's the best way to explain it. The less obvious it is. And we are going to have more of not so obvious Christian creatives. And I'll also explain all of that. So just chill. The house, the garden, the field, and the forest. The garden is still very much Christian. Field, you are closer to the world. Forest is pure jungle. And you would have Christians that are sent there. There's actually a Nigerian artist right now that I believe is in the forest, but I, that I believe has shown his hand too much. A few people might know who I'm referring to. And, and it's also because of the way we have not been properly discipled because the the church is the the body of Christ the church is the source the church should do the discipling of everyone both those who will be obvious and those who wouldn't be obvious that's how you'll be discipled and function everywhere anywhere you're supposed to be functioning right if you are not sent anywhere, if you are obviously if you are not sent to the field or the forest and you go there, it's at your own risk. So only go where you are sent. But I'm just, you know, breaking all of that. Now, because we are the church, we have we have over time built creatives and musicians that only serve or only offer the music and the art that is needed within the church. Now, that is what has limited the power, not the power, that is what has limited how influential on society our art and our music has been. So, we have a lot of influence over the body, which we have not had anywhere near the influence we should have on culture because we do not send people. We do not have people that are sent. We have not, we have not discipled to be sent. And that really is the aim that I have 
um, with this episode that we can see how we have played small, how we have limited um, the work of the ministry because we've only built musicians that function in the fivefold or we've only focused on musicians that folk that that uh that are like the music versions of the fivefold exactly so they're like the musical versions of the fivefold but the fivefold is for the body the fivefold is to build the body but build the body for the work of the ministry so if you check that scripture <laughs> in Ephesians, it says that he gave apostles, gave prophets, gave evangelists, gave um, pastors, gave teachers. He gave them for the church to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, which means that the work of the ministry is actually not what the fivefold is doing. The fivefold is building the saints for the work of the ministry. So there's a work of the ministry that is saints, which is the pews. Those in the pews are supposed to do outside in different fields, right? But let me come back to, you know, music. Um, and there was something I said on that IG Live that was quite strong, where I said, I'm not trying to lead you into God's presence because that's not my work. I'm not sent to do that. I'm sent to shape culture. I'm sent to influence culture, you know, which has influenced everything that I've done between 2010 and 2017, but without, without, I was kind of scalar between 2010 and 2017. After 2017, I had incredible focus. So 2017 was kind of like where I had my burning bush experience, where it was now like, where I come, walk before me and be perfect. This is what I'll have you do. And then I started to do that, right? So the church ought, and what we have to start doing is to recognize the talents and the giftings within the body in our care. Identify the anointings on these gifts. Realize the ones that are to be in the house. Realize the ones that are supposed to go outside the house, that are supposed to function in the garden or in the field or in the forest. And we will know if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are called to creatives, you would know where this or that is supposed to function. You would know. And it is not... But maybe I'll come back to this later. <laughs> In terms of like what our fivefold ought to do for creatives. So what fivefold ought to do for creatives is not really creating platforms, which is what creatives have been crying for for many years. You know, no, the fivefold does not create platforms for doctors does not create platforms for engineers, does not create platforms for... So I, I don't know why creatives, why we used to clamor for platforms like to create. No, no, no. The doctor works in a hospital or builds a hospital, creates a health business, which becomes his platform or her platform for engaging with the society, for engaging with the people. The creative ought to do the same unless you are a creative that is functioning in the house, in the temple. Now, if you check the proportion of Christian creatives today and check what's the proportion, it's almost like maybe 90, 95% are functioning in the temple. So there's a ridiculous imbalance. We do not have Enough anywhere near enough in the garden. Certainly don't have anywhere near enough in the field. And the forest lacks culture. It's, 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 just, it's just devoid of light. That's why it's that dark. 
That's why there's so much darkness there. Darkness does not have a definition outside of light. You can only define darkness in the light of light. For you to define darkness, you have to mention light. You have to use light to define darkness because you cannot create darkness. The way for there to be darkness is to take out light. It is the light defines light, light defines darkness. The presence of light is light, the absence of light is darkness. So darkness does not exist by itself. Darkness does not exist of itself. Darkness exists because light is absent. It is when light is absent that it is dark. So if you infuse light, darkness flees. If you infuse light, darkness flees. That's the reason why you would hear many of our leaders and pastors demonize entertainment. It sickens me like, ah, oh God. <laughs> it sickens me why we demonize entertainment. Like entertainment is bad. Like entertainment is, I was having a conversation with a sister of mine some days ago and I was just, it was almost like I was already doing this edition. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> There is nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely wrong. The, the issue is what has been associated with entertainment lacks light. So when our pastors or our leaders think entertainment, it is those guys that come to their mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like entertainment is bad. Entertainment is entertainment is just a vehicle finish. You can use entertainment to convey drugs. You can use entertainment to convey speaking in tongues. You can use entertainment to convey illicit sex. You can use entertainment to convey chastity. Entertainment is simply a vehicle that will convey a message. Unfortunately, the world recognizes the power of entertainment, the power of media, more than us. And so we seem to always play catch up. So I'm hoping that this becomes like a wake-up call to us, right? That it becomes a wake-up call for us to understand what God really wants us to do or what God is banking on us to do. And I would, I would try my best as I, as I do more of Black Flame, Black Flame episodes and editions to speak more boldly and to express the things that God puts in my heart um, with more audacity and more fearlessness. Because there are, there are things that I feel <laughs> that are almost doctrinal. When I say doctrinal, I mean, when I share, it will almost be like, it will almost be like I'm prescribing a doctrine or a way that we should go about things. Now, look at those in the, those in the house. So the term gospel music. If you think congregational worship, temple music, music that we use in the temple, music that aids worship, music that aids worship, that helps us praise God or worship God or consecration and all of those things is, is music for people that already have the gospel. It's not music for people who are in the world and are trying to win. It's music for people who already have the gospel, people, people who already have a relationship with God. Those are people you are trying to lead into God's presence to worship God, praise God, and die to self. All those concepts are concepts for Christians. Right? Now, what's gospel music? What's, what's gospel? Gospel is like the good news, right? The... Jesus came, Jesus died, and Jesus rose, you know. Which means that at the core of gospel music, gospel music is meant for the world. Because it's music that we should make trying to share the gospel of Christ with people who do not have it or people who have not accepted it, either people who have not heard about it or who have heard but 
it is still seed form. You still need to water that seed so that the Holy Spirit can give it. Um, the Spirit can give increase. God gives Paul what Paul planted, Apollos watered. God gave the increase. What that thing means is, it is not just the person that preached at the point that someone gives life to Christ that did the work. Someone has planted before, maybe someone has heard it before, maybe, a, which is why it is. It is very. It is very myopic and shallow to think that a platform like maybe light out that we do around high schools where we may not or maybe a god's can party where can, platforms that can be that can ha, that can be touch points with the world are any less spiritual than platforms that you think are more revivaling or revivalish because someone is going to plant the seed someone is going to pull the person in so you the person operating in the forest the person operating in the forest encounters more sinners encounters more there's no better way to put it more sinners and more people that need god that have not found him and God's design is for that contact without contamination to pull that person in. So the person in the forest might not pull the person in from the forest to the house. Might get the person to the field. Then the agent in the field pulls the person into the garden. The agent in the garden pulls the person into the house. Then we hand over that to... to the creatives in the house and then they can now get you into the deep you must step into the shallow ends of the water first before you get into the deep there are so many ways to explain this thing so many ways another way is to see it as an arrow an arrow has a shaft and the arrow point so when you shoot a sh an arrow the entire body of the arrow does not go into the target. It is the arrow point that goes into the target. That is the point that engages the target. The shaft does not engage the target. The arrow point engages the target. What has been happening is we have lost the connect between the shaft and the arrow point. So the arrow point gets into the target. There's no connection with the shaft. And so the arrow point gets lost inside the target because it can't pull, it can't pull in. I hope I'm explaining this thing right. Because, listen, this was, that 2017 encounter, this was what God told me. God said, I equipped all my children differently. And I intentionally equipped them like that. Some will function in the house some will function outside. What has happened is the body has only recognized those functioning within the house. And so, those whose expression differs from that of the house have not found room for expression. They've not, it's not even, see, when we complain that people went to the world, went to sing in the world, or da -da 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 -da. this was what God told me. He said, it's not even first about they are looking for fame or they are looking for money. It, that's, that's, not, that's not it at the core. At the core is that there is a seed of greatness on the inside that is crying out for expression. We have not created the means and the framework for these gifts to find expression. And so they've gone out without guidance. God told me they are, they are actually originally designed to go out. They are actually designed to go out, but not to go out the way they've been going out. They are supposed to be commissioned and sent out by the same people who are demonizing what they have. 
And so you now have French people. No, no, no. You now have I want to switch it. That's why. But since I called French first, let's use French. You now have French people in Somalia who were originally designed to go to Somalia, but they were supposed to go as French ambassadors in Somalia, teaching Somalia the values and the ways of the kingdom of France. But because the kingdom of France has not commissioned them, has not schooled them in how to be ambassadors, they have now gone to Somalia and become Somalian. So that's what's happened or that's what's been happening. So we the custodians of the gospel have been truncating the plan of God. We've been truncating the purpose of God, the mission of God, because we have been forcing all our people into a particular mode. So you, you realize, and God told me this, that those who he has given, who he has equipped differently, they end up doing either of three things. Let's use music as an example. Your expression of music is different, is Afro or is hip or is whatever it is. Because the church only has room for expression in temple music. They either mold themselves and force themselves to make that temple music. And I have examples of people who have done that. I've been in this space long enough to know, but I will not mention names. They either do that or the seed crying is crying so loudly and they are resolute people. So there are people, there are some people who are resolute. And so they break out and they just, they lost, literally. Or they give up altogether and go and find something else to do. So they find another discipline or another work or whatever. They just leave art or music or creativity altogether. A few of us who st just stayed through, and I that encounter in 2017 is possibly part of why I, I, I was able to stay true of course my wife as well but it's not it's not <laughs> it's not ashangri 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 that has kept me here for 20 years because really i've been here for 20 years more than half of my life has been spent doing this actually if i do say so myself boys i'm product of mercy let's speak christianese right and what God then told me that day in 2017 was, it was almost like he was sharing a burden in his heart and placing that burden on mine. And that has informed everything I've done since 2017. It's just that now I have the liberty, he has given me the liberty to share and to talk. I've just done since 2017, light out kept going around secondary schools with fellow Christian creatives. We've done 20 editions of that, reached 30,000 students. Aramanda started creating festival. You see, when you hear God, that's when noise does not touch you. So when you sang Elijah Levu and said, so I don't listen to the noise. The reason why criticism, people are yelling on Twitter, something, something. The reason why it does not, it does not touch me is because, brah, I heard God. I am a member of the body. I'm not a rebel. I'm not a bastard. I'm a man under authority. But the highest authority is Christ, is God. So if you show me, say I don't hear, 
to the tilt. I, I don't care who that man is, man. I'm I'm a follow through with what he says. And that's 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 what has informed everything that I've done till now. Now I have the go ahead to start this, which is why I'm doing this. This is second edition, the second episode. I keep saying edition because I'm used to shows. <laughs> this is the second episode. I'm gonna have many more. I'm gonna do many more. I'm gonna have guests at some point. But I, I knew that the first set, maybe like first two or first three, at the very least, would just be me, you know, sharing from my heart. All right? So, gospel music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God I remembered. So I explained temple music and how temple music really is for people who already have the gospel. Now, gospel music, that term, is meant to go out. It's meant to reach those who do not yet have the gospel. Predominantly, or majorly, or primarily. But when you hear gospel music, what comes to your mind is temple music, is worship, is praise, is the sounds of the temple, the sounds needed for congregational worship. Sounds of consecration, sounds of all of that, which is very key and we need it. But that is what we have associated with gospel music. Now, the music that actually preaches the gospel, we don't even see it as gospel. Like, like it's not worthy of being gospel music. <laughs> it's okay, like, it's not even worthy of being gospel music because... There are no parts in it. It's not it does not bring goosebumps and all of that. And I I I used to say that, and this is this can be controversial, but I used to say that that term, gospel music, I don't think it came from God. Because if I'm in the world, if I'm a sinner. And there are three radio stations. One is playing hip hop. One is playing jazz. One is playing gospel. I'm not turning to gospel. Whereas I'm the one that needs it. I'm the one that you guys are trying to reach. But then you have termed it something that limits it. Which is why maybe it's even good now that the music that is supposed to preach the gospel, we don't see it as gospel. So maybe at least it's good. Those ones can be free of that tag. Which brings me to maybe what I'll use to round up. Which is that we need to be less obvious as Christians. We need we need more, we need to be less obvious. We are we are we are such we are such an obvious people. There's a remember I talked about the Nigerian act that I think as who I believe is operating is, is like a member of the body, but he's in the forest, but he has shown his hand so much that the forest now knows who you are. You are supposed to be under the radar. You are supposed to just operate stealth. S-T-E-A-L-T-H. You should operate stealthily when you're in the forest. That it is people in the core that will know that that guy is ours. Oh, that guy is with us. That guy is ours. That guy is an agent. Is there for such a time as this. Do you think Esther was going about the kingdom shouting, I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew? Why are you shouting everywhere? Just do your work, man. And stop trying to... Un I There's a female artist who rose and became big in the in the secular space and i won't give i won't even go into like secular gospel no that's not what this is about this me this episode is for the church really that's why it's titled what it's titled and i i won't even say she gave her life to christ because i believe she, she had always been christian Right, she grew up in church, all of that. Then went for a music competition. Now I have most people will be able to know what I'm talking about. Went for a music competition, did really well, and then started off on 
you know, in the mainstream and rose really big. She's become really big. A lot of visibility, a lot of attention, a lot of commands, a lot of attention, all of that. Now you go through a transition period or a, a period and you now decide that I want to make faith-based music now, right? And then she gets signed to a Christian label. And then there was all this noise everywhere online about welcome home, the devil lost, she's back in the fold, she's back at home, welcome home, you are here now. And the whole bunch of Christians online is shouting, hashtag welcome home, she's back. And I was, I was just looking like, why are we such a, an obvious people? There are different words that came to my mind that I kept trying to pass through so I don't use the wrong word. But it's, it's I'm like, how can you not see that what you are doing is self-sabotaging? Because you make this big announcement that you are now a gospel artist, that you are now, then you start to use berets and all this stuff. So basically, you have this platform, you have this visibility, you have this attention commanding presence in the world. The Jesus you are coming to say you want to sing for now said go into all the world. You are already there. You have this positioning. You now want to make faith-based music. Music that will now intentionally and deliberately push the agenda of the kingdom because that's that's the only difference between what you were doing and what you now want to do you were making music just for making music there was no agenda to the music now you want to make music that will push the agenda of the kingdom of god you now come to announce and I was just thinking to myself, can't this label see this? Can't, can't you see how you are shooting yourself in the foot? Like, for the life of me, you have people here who have the mandate to break out and are trying and are figuring and doing all of that. You, whether it was designed, deliberate or not, you are sure there. You already have that footing. You now say, no, I will come back inside here. So what you, you come back inside here and then try to, what will you now do? Like there's, there's, there's something I, I, I heard. Two people are by the, by the, they are, they are fishing by the sea. And this guy says he's caught maybe three fish. And the other guy says, ah, oh, let's get a, let's get a bigger boat so we can catch more fish. The, this, the main guy goes, so that what will happen? He says, so that we can sell it. Okay, so that will happen. Okay, we sell it. After we sell it, we make a lot of money. Okay, so that what will happen? So we'll build a house by the beach. So that what will happen? So that we can chill by the beach and fish. The first guy goes, I'm already sitting by the beach and fishing. <laughs> Go through all of that. I'm I'm already, I already have what you are saying. I should do all these things. So you are there, which means what did what that thing did was you were announcing to the MTNs and the good, the Nigerian breweries and the, uh, uh, what's this one that they do in December? That festival. 
no a countdown, then the one that they do in Echo, Flight Time. You are announcing to all the mainstream gigs, mainstream platforms that I do not want anything to do with you again. I now want only redeem winners, HOTR experience. Those are that's where I want to play now. I now that I now want to push the agenda of the kingdom. I want to push it to the kingdom. The kingdom has the kingdom. God positioned you there for a reason, for such a time as this. Then God caught you and is like, okay, it's time to do this. But then you're like, I, 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 I couldn't understand it. <laughs> for the life of me. I couldn't understand it. We're not... You know, if the devil knew that it was killing Jesus that was the secret to the, no, not secret, was the game changer to the redemption of mankind. You know, he would not have killed Jesus. The Bible actually says this, that if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord, the king of glory right now so imagine jesus announcing i've come now i need to die so that when i die my flesh and blood will save the world they will be like yo oh that's how well, you're going to live forever <laughs> Do you understand? we are so freaking obvious as a people i i don't get it and we don't serve an obvious god God is the most, I, I say it every time. I say God is, God is the grandmaster of grandmasters. He's so grandmaster that his enemy is part of his plan. The devil is part of the tools for in God's plan. Which means the way we will plan. But... The Lord help us, man. But I mean, I just really wanted to share that there is more to Christian music than temple music. Temple music is key. In fact, temple music is what the church needs most for services. That thing gave me such freedom. I realized that I don't think a time will ever come, or maybe I should not say, Sha, but like that they will church for service will invite people like us more than they invite people like a pastor Nat or um, and stop it, <laughs> you know, or Theophilus. You have to realize what your assignment is and where you have to focus your attention. Since 2017, without me knowing, I've been completely focused on building platforms. Platforms that engage society. Platforms that engage the world. Platforms that engage, that go out, that takes the light out. That's what breath light out. That's what light out is about. We're taking our light out. So it started from secondary schools. It was not like God told me this the way. Do the, God just said, go and do a concert in your secondary school. I went to do it from there. We started going to secondary school, secondary school, secondary school, secondary school, after secondary school. Now, as I, we have done 20. As I'm recording this, so we have done 20. Maybe by the time you're watching this now, we'll have done 24. And that's just one expression. Aramanda, we have done four. Maybe by the time you're watching this, we'll have done five because we're already planning the fifth one. Launch 464, we've done 13. So you have all this. We, I, I obeyed my way into this, right? But it came out of that encounter that I had in 2017. So I really hope and beseech our leaders in church 
to see that we have talents, skills, and anointings that have been positioned, no, that have been equipped for unique work. And we need to disciple them for their work. We need to disciple them and position them for their work. You cannot disciple a spiral the same way you would disciple a sumisola. The core of the discipleship, the core of the training, the core of the consecrations will be the same, will be similar. The medium, the expression, and the positioning will be different. What we need, the realm we need to get to now is where we have five-fold ministry that is enlightened enlightened enough understanding enough to realize that we will need more spirals and please less obvious spirals more journey drills I, I can't say this name because it's a, it's a pain point for me. I, I, it's a serious pain point for me. It's not even who you're thinking. <laughs> if I call it Wala, <laughs> but because I know that she is supposed to be functioning between field and forest as an agent of the kingdom, but she's not. She's between field and forest, she, but it's not, she's not an agent because she's not doing anything for the purposes of the kingdom. She's not pushing any agenda. If the Holy Spirit reveals what I'm talking about to you, he reveals it. But <laughs> I almost said something. I won't say the name, but I'll say the name. But, so, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So if, if the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, he reveals it to you. But, that that's that you know um but it is incredibly needed in these times and in these end times incredibly needed we're going to need to influence culture like never before we're going to need to penetrate spaces like never before we're going to need to shine as dark shine in darkness and dispel darkness. Now note that if you are sent to the body, if you are sent to the house, don't go outside. You don't have the grace. Don't go if you are sent to garden, don't go to the forest. You don't have the grace for the forest. If you are sent to the even if you are sent to the fields, don't go to the like me now. I'm not sent to the forest. I'm between garden and field. I know the near forest. They don't send me there. And the further away you are sent to, the more you need to be consecrated. Which is part of what I also shared on that IG life. So it's not like those in the house, they are fasting, they are praying, they are studying the word. Then you, you think you are just vibe. You are not just viable. The vibe is just vehicle. The vibe is just the vehicle that is carrying the message, that is carrying the, that is that is expressing the agenda. So you must have your consecrations. You must have your rituals. It is your rituals that make you spiritual. What is the truth? There is no spiritual without ritual. It's not. It. Communion is ritual. Fasting is ritual. Praying is ritual. Studying the word is ritual. Because you can't give what you do not have. You, If you are sent outside, it means that 
what a a dunsin, for instance, sings, you have that understanding. And then you can distill that message and convey it in the language of the time in such a simple way, yet still powerful, that you penetrate the heart of a guy that is smoking or that is in the prison. And he strikes at his heart because he's just vibing to music. But while he's vibing, he's like, there's something spiritual that takes place. Because you carry the same spirit. You carry the same spirit. All right. I think I'm done. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. You should check out Tokam. Um, it's, it's right there on the title. It's the song reference for this edition. We are light and we are salt. If you are salt, you have to get into the soup. Is the For you to get into the soup, the soup is being cooked and so it is hot. There's heat. So you cannot avoid the heat. You have, if you are salt, you will get into the heat of the soup of food that is being cooked. That's how you are going to influence the soup of food that is being cooked. If you run away from the heat, then the soup is devoid of your salt or your saltiness or your flavor. You have to get into the into the heat. Um, so yeah, check out Tokam, listen to it, and be blessed. See you next episode. Thank you. Bye.